the brown And the sky is gray I went for a walk On a winter's day I'd be saving more If I was in L.A. Hey, welcome to Santa Cruz and uh, I'm Bobby Bell and we've got Crazy George here from the Brotherhood of Eternal Love and um, tonight we're going to talk about some of the old stuff in the, in the day, back in the days in Laguna Beach and uh, um, on Wave Street. We were at Wave Street in um, Laguna Beach, Choo Choo lived there um, with us and all that. You got that picture of Choo Choo we can put up there and then um, Choo Choo was that's Choo Choo, um, Stephen King. He lived on Wave Street, and um, George lived on Wave Street. And um, Choo Choo, rest in peace, he got killed in the, he OD'd in Mexico when the Swan and his brother Dangy wanted to have him run a load up from of some pot from Mexico. And I guess he didn't want to. <laughs> but anyway, um, Back to Wave Street. Now this is in 19, what, 67? Yeah. Early, and um, the um, yeah. Wave Street's in Laguna Beach, California, you know, where the Mystic Arts world was, and Johnny Griggs and stuff. And anyway, there was the first part of the hashy smuggling, our friend Peter Amaranthus um, was living there also, and George was living there, and, um, um, they, we had this hash brought in, and then I wasn't there, so I'll let, I'll let George kind of run down what happened, but anyway, J.D. Green shot Peter Amaranthus in the back and moved his body. He, they made everybody lay down with guns and not look at anything because he shot him illegally and then had to move the body 20 feet to make it legal. None of these kids had guns, never used them all. This is just smoking some weed and stuff like that and, and nobody had a gun but when the cops came in and da 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 anyway um george what happened you were there and george witnessed the whole thing yeah uh, unfortunately but i did so um uh, who, you were telling me somebody who did you think brought him there somebody who were the people that brought him there and um well, or tell us what happened, like Ricky Bevins. Uh, Rick came in with Pete, and another guy with Pock Face. It looked like he was a Spanish. And when I pulled up to the the in the back to make a to start from beginning, I said. When I walked in the house to a friend that was sitting on the floor in the living room, and uh, <clears throat> I said to him, "What's going on?" Because I, you know, I, you know, kind of pretty much aware of this, you know, from the years having to be out on your own, and. Uh, what I saw was a cop, you know, more than one, sitting in a car. You got a Mexican over here and a black guy driving a, and a white young kid in the back. And I sat down and asked Price Locke, you know, what's going on? He says, oh, nothing much, man. I says, no, what's going on? Price Tell me. lived there too? No, Price didn't. He was just there. hanging out he there. He was at just the time. there, yeah. yeah. You know, the smoke. Who, who else was there at that time in the just, house? Just uh, Pete and, uh, and Ricky and. Uh, gosh. Tommy? Was Tommy in there? Tommy was around, yeah. I Tommy think. Tunnel? Yeah. Yeah. And then Pete. Pete Amaranthus came up to San Francisco because a lot of the people were leaving because of the, the police harassment and stuff. It was really uh, coming it's down. too much heroin coming in. No, this was before that oh. stuff. It was like when, it was like when, um, um, 
the first part of it. Anyway, when Johnny Bilal and Travis ratted everybody off, you know, and it was right after all that, and Travis Atchbrook and Johnny Bilal were the first informers in, in Anaheim, you know, and... Um, well, I knew John was for a fact because I went twice and saw him testify in the courtroom, sitting in the courtroom, watching him testify against Gallup, David Gallup. Yeah. The guy that lived on Wave Street. Yeah, with there his was wife like and kids. 40 people and stuff. Yeah, David Gallup lived in uh, Wave Street. There was 15 of us and there was Most five of those people women. don't even know David Gallup. And, and there was five women and there was the rest males and they were in the house and when Pete and I, when I got up to go ask Pete down the hall, what's going on? We looked out the window and seen two, uh, you know, supposed to be peace officers. You but, told Price though that those guys are cops, right? And they didn't believe you. Is that what? Yeah, the yeah. Price right. wouldn't believe you. No, you you're told just him, crazy. Those guys George, are cops. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, uh -huh. I don't know what yeah. I said. Uh huh. I don't know. I haven't. I don't. Yeah. Anyway, so then you <clears throat> saw the cops out there. So we started yelling, "It's the cops!" And like you know, what do quail do? They. Yeah, you know, a pheasant. A bunch or, of quail, huh? Yeah, and, we just scattered. Then, this was over some hashish. Six pounds. Six pounds of hashies. Yeah. And who had brought that? There wasn't. Who I brought that hash there? Oh, Ricky, man. Ricky B. Yeah. Ricky, Tricky Ricky yeah. Bevins. Hey, hey. Yeah, All right. He had it in the And then did the you house. say Travis was there, too? I never seen him. Oh, okay. I who else was him. there um, with Ricky and stuff? Who was there with Ricky? The guys holding the gun and stuff. There was 22 cops. They took us away in a bus. Okay, then uh, what happened to Pete? When everybody split well, out the windows? Well, you, mis you mistakenly got it wrong. Like where you are? I had a set of drums with a swivel drum seat, and it was really nice. Go back around now and then do that mic cord. <laughs> He's a professional at that. All right, thank you, George. And. I can do it. Too. I got involved and I asked him, where were we at? Oh, Price Lock, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I just seen him eat. No, you really didn't. But besides that, what I was really uh, speaking of, not to lose my train of thought, uh, I'm sitting on my drums. There's a window right here. I could tap this window right Tell there. Tell those guys right there what happened, George. I can tap the window right there. It was like Number <clears throat> it was like no farther from where Bobby's sitting and Green was holding his automatic. <clears throat> he was left-handed. And I heard a gun go off and it wasn't his. Cause I'm s sitting this far away. If I would have tapped on the window, he'd have probably turned around and shot me for sure. <laughs> yeah, me I, you know, I can't, I passed, I'm proud of it. I passed the California state test to possess and bear firearms at 13 and a half. I respect them. Not the gun, it's the person. Besides that, he goes just a little bit over and bang! After I already heard one shot and I looked over and wondered who, because I know it was coming from here. And I looked over and I see Pete in midair flying into a bush, a hedge, actually. There ain't no other place he could go. And just as he is in midair, this green 
a peace officer. J.D. Right? Green. Yeah. Shot Peter in the back to do no, coward. No, he shot him in the leg. Oh, in the leg. And the reason why he was diving in the bush is because somebody shot him in the arm and it flung his arms out and there was no place to go and he flew into a, a hedge. And from there, this Yahoo turned around and went bang in midair, severed his artery and he bled to death. Now to be found justifiable homicide and quote, you have to be 125 yards away. No matter who you are, cop feet, or- Feet, right? Not yards. 100. 125 yards. 125 wow. feet, 125 That's yards. That's a football field. Yeah. You have to be that far away to be able to be found justifiable homicide. Because Pete didn't have a gun. Pete yeah. didn't have it. Nobody no, had a gun. Nobody had, had a gun in that house. Hippie beads and some marijuana. Yeah, big but, deal. Yeah, back then it was like, oh you know, you were God. the evil ones and everything if you smoked pot and, and you were criminals and rapists and murderers. But no, nowadays, we, hey, we're the doctors and way. we use it for medicine. Not that Give me way. a break. But anyway, go ahead, George. What happened next? Well, they plugged him. And then they pushed everybody back in the living room. Whether it makes a difference to just about too many people or not, regardless, we had Christ's picture on the wall, and we didn't have no fire going on in the fireplace, you know. Uh, they, they literally thrashed the place. And, and not only that, there was two bullet holes head high, and three bullet holes, chest high. That's five slugs down that hall. Down that hall, five slugs. Bam, 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 bam. You know, five, you know. So what happened after they shot Pete? He went into the bushes, and then what happened? They Oh, up. that's when they pushed everybody back inside. And wouldn't let him look at nothing. Not had her they... face down on the ground. He kicked Tommy in the cojones, you know, because he had his legs apart. He told him, "Everybody, shut up." There was five women in the, in the joint. He's about five foot two. Oh, he's a short little pipsqueak. Yeah, you know? but he's a good guy, he's man. He's a real good guy. Tommy Tunnel's one of my best friends. JC's little brother. Hey, good. Most of them new Brotherhood guys don't even know who J.C. was. They think the, sh the mystic art and shopkeepers that are trying to cop all the glory and the thunder from the Brotherhood from the seventh grade on through the created a bond and shit. Dude, don't even know who J.C. is or Elliot or, or half them guys, man. Gary and it goes on and on. But anyway, to get back to George's part of this, when George saw them... Oh, they kept me in the slammer. Why? Because they moved the body, right? You didn't tell that part. Tell them yeah, what happened. Yeah, oh, they moved the body all the way down to the street. You know, all the way down to the, uh, the how front close road. Was it, how close was he when he shot Pete, would you say? When oh, you saw how JD far Green. away? Yeah, how far away? Oh, when you looked over and saw him man. flying from the bushes to the bushes, how far was... No farther than from here to that... Uh, orange uh, the lateral ladder orange. over there. All I right. mean, yeah, that's what uh, almost, 15, 20 feet. Almost, yeah. maybe not even quite. Yeah. Hmm. And then so, and then they they took you guys all down. And they pushed us in the front room. Pushed in the front room and until they moved down. until they moved the body and then. Yeah. And then they took you to jail because you were a witness. Well, they took all of us to jail in a bus. Oh, well, they had the bus already. The oh, they, oh, so it was oh, all yeah. pre-planned. And oh, so, yeah. who do you think the snitch was that brought him? Well, definitely that blonde guy in the back. You know, I didn't see below around. All I saw was uh, Ricky, and I don't know what he's involved with or. Uh, 
you know, how he how he even got there or was it come about? Maybe he brought it. Maybe he, I don't I don't know on that at all. I I swear. What happened to Tommy? I was in the wrong. Did Tommy go to jail too? Wrong. Oh, everybody, you know. We all got hooked up to that chain gang, women. Yeah, and you, you had a, a one of your girls there was pregnant or something yeah, at the time, so yeah. they had a pregnant girl. And, Marilyn, yeah. You know, her, she changed her name now. She wrote a book about all the Laguna Beach uh, boys and how macho we were. And all and all we wanted to movie. do was screw pot, pot the, pillar, pillar. Doesn't anybody else? God, that's all there is in life is making love and, <laughs> and uh, eating and uh, really? social contact and I wouldn't or harm work, a whatever woman. you call it. Huh? I would never harm a woman in my life. Why catch anybody doing that? I know, man. It's like it's all this so weird stupid. Stuff. I remember the, the the Brotherhood guys, Johnny guys, and all those, and Joe Lord, and all the boys went down spaghetti and everybody to the. Uh, this was before they turned on the acid and stuff, and they were, you know, like. Uh, real whatever they were, but they went down to the Santa Ana River Yards Macho. and, and uh, beat up all the homeless people in the bums and burnt the burnt the, the little tent city down in Santa Ana. That was before they turned on the LSD and stuff, but um, thank goodness that came along. <laughs> Some old stories and, and things that, um, you know, these... Um, the seventh grade, we've seen all these people, Robert Martin and Brandy Freeze and, and um, Freeze. yeah, really, and, and it goes on, Mike Donahue, nobody, he was in the Street Sweepers, and, and it goes on, and Tim Donahue, and, and uh, you know, Mike so Beeson, great. and, and uh, all these other yeah. people that were actually involved in all this, that were fugitives in San Francisco at the Aquarian Temple, while the, while the uh, Mystic Arts was, Getting started, I was a fugitive for riding the freight train and, yeah. and not cutting my hair. But um, uh, I brought him eighty grand. I know. But Choo Choo came up, and we started playing bass after that. And, and uh, uh, actually, he came up before that. Choo Choo wasn't there, huh? He had come up with Diana before that happened. Pete Amaranthus came up to San Francisco, went to the temple, and he was going to find a place up there because it was getting so crazy down there. Everybody wanted to get out of Dodge, you know, and stuff. I told him, come on up here. Yeah, we told him, come on, bro, we'll, we'll, you know, come out with all this other fugitives up here hiding out in the city. And it was uh, like, hey. I was like, <laughs> I know, man. I got busted with JC at his house in 65 uh, after I got back from college and all that. So I was going to college and dropped out of college and... Uh, JC had got busted from Valhalla and uh, for a lid of pot and he was in yeah. court, an ounce of weed, man. And, and, yeah, uh, what a joke. He was hiding out up north and because Billy Erskine, one of our best friends, was in the Air Force at that time and uh, oh, up in Jill Air Force Base. So me and JC.
Keezy and all them guys, and then Ke Keezy was all the merry pranksters and outrageous, um, you know, party bus, and they were all had all these drugs and costumes and um, megaphones and stuff with traveling troops, and they went to see Larry, who was the uh, guru, psychologist, uh, spiritual, da 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 da, and they went all the way across the country. And they didn't get hassled at all or thrown in jail or nothing or checked for drugs. And that one guy that rode the bus was strung out on, on crank, man, the whole time. They tell you that stuff. He was like, yeah. Or, or, what was that guy, Jack Kerak or whoever the heck he was? And then, um, so I mean, you know, they, if you look back who all those, those people's kids are, then you'll know why they got books and got to do all that stuff. You know, even. Hugh Romney, oh, I mean, Wavy Gravy, oh, yeah. is your cousin running? Oh, no wonder you voted for Obama. Oh, gee, Bobby, we're supposed to be part of the Bohemian Club, which is that same bloodline, which is 36 of our presidents are related to the Queen of England, to Rome, Julius Caesar, Jesus, and all the way back to Amon Ra, and Hitler, yeah, that's right. And um, 26 of them are 33 degrees Freemasons. And they scammed it, America. But this whole thing has been a big scam and shit. And so all of us are going through all this turmoil and stuff and everything. And just because these guys want to be rich and lorded over everybody. Now they're doing it in Santa Cruz. They're doing that shit in Santa Cruz. And they're, they're bragging about it. And you go down to the Rittenhouser building and you look at those three, or the, the, um, the Rittenhouser building has the, the rams up at the top. You know, at the top of that building, that's Ares, the god of war that the Egyptians had and the Romans had big temples and stuff to them. It used to be all them different religions and stuff and everything until they got the one all consolidated corporation religion that you guys are all buying into. Send your money to me. Don't be sending it to politicians and those people. Look at that crap the Muslims are going through because somebody showed a video. Look up on YouTube how many videos of the Pope and stuff about sex scandals and everything, and these Muslim guys are, they're all sick, the Hebrews, the Ma all of your religions are bullshit, dude, and then you're pushing it all on us, you're paying taxes, sending all these people to war, and then talking about people that, the, you're not doing nothing for the homeless or anything, you just turn your back on that, so you're not doing anything that you profess in your religions in the first place, so we got to get it together, but anyway, um, that's what we had to go through, and I mean, it was from families and everything. And then when you told them you were taking acid and all the stuff that tried for them people to try to dig that, you know, oh. and it was like, hey, oh, and, um, hey, Sandy, can you put on that black and white um, just for the music part in the background? And then so, and then just show me, show me and George up here and stuff that. Um, this is uh, High Roots, and they played out the Cali Fest. We're going to have a show on them coming up pretty soon. It's a good one about the cops and everything. Listen to this.
That's the she same thing happened with Johnny Griggs, man. This kid took the big down. Yeah. And everything was fine. When she had to get up and go tinkle, she got up and went. Most kids are there in the first place, so it doesn't yeah. do anything. You create natural DMT yeah. in your brain yeah. um, by yeah. when you're born in the yeah. crystal microids of your pineal gland. And yeah. every night when you go to sleep, you're tripping. So watch out for the brain, brain police. They'll be trying to <laughs> tax you for going out to, out, of, out of your yeah, body. Yeah, you're going to lose some cashews. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the sick old man. Oh, man. All right. They're trying to put a tag. They're trying to put a number in. They're trying to classify everything that they can just so they can try to get Three you Three cities rule the world. You too. Check it out for yourself. Pardon me? I said three cities rule the world. That's show we did. Remember we showed the three cities rule the world and stuff, and that's so that's what we're dealing with. You know, now that we're we're um, doctors and and caregivers with our medicine and stuff, we're going to try to heal the planet. You know, they got that uh, 2012 <coughs> concert at the Mayan temple in um, Estapa in uh, Yucatan, and um, that ought to be a good one. Yeah, unbelievable. The Harmony Fest folks are putting that on, and they're they're all going well. You know, um, positive creativity, and but there is a negative on this planet. There's a positive and a negative right here because the sun is the positive and the earth is the negative. The polarity, you know how it's working. Or the male, female, uh, mother, father, conscious, subconscious, et cetera, et cetera. And the one that those two came from. It's the source. That's the that's the eye in the pyramid or the third eye, the stargate that's on your dollar bill. They don't want you to know that's you. Oh, no. They don't want you to realize oh, you're God no. self. They want you to go through them and priests and all this superstructure yeah. and taxes and work for them and they'll control you and tell you what to do. And if you just behave yourself, then they'll throw you some pot and let you have gay sex, maybe, or marriage, but we doubt it. But um, hey. Anyway, um, so in our fight from the from the black and the white, the dark and the light. Hey, could you play that um, high roots stuff and just let it loop and turn it down a little? Bit, or can we do that like that? Just for the music in the background, you know, so you can get a picture. We can have music. I like the music and stuff. Oh, okay, cool. It's, not, it's just like low behind our stuff, right? All right, no thank you. No problem. No problem, Ito. So, so this um, rejuvenation festival in down south is on the summer, uh, the winter solstice is on the 21st of uh, <coughs> um, December, and uh, Mayan people are going to be involved in it, and all kinds of home men and stuff from the rainforest and everything down there. So. It's going to be quite a gathering. It ought to be really nice to go down there, but of course, you know, you got to have bucks to do that. It's not like in the old days where you could jump on a freight train or a hitchhike or something. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's like the, with their big immigration thing, they'll get everybody keyed up and then they'll say, We don't need borders. Everything's going to be open. The Trans American Highway they're building from Mexico and Texas back there right now, they're taking all our roads that we paid taxes for. And they're giving them to private companies to charge you tolls on them. And they're gonna, pretty soon there won't be anything. And they're going to run all this shipping from China and the other countries, from Mexico all the way up to Canada. For the consumers, you guys, if you behave yourself and um, 
and get your shots and get the you know the Obama's health care and you do your work and, and don't bitch too much and stuff. You you can bitch a little bit, but then then you'll be able to you know not have any money and get your little chip and your number and and work your credits off. You already owe you know the national debt, so you're dead already. All your kids and everything. Your birth certificate is handled by the Census Bureau. Check that out. You're already dialed into Rothschild and Rockefeller's uh, United Nations, uh, New World Order. The United Nations was the League of Nations. And um, after World War II, when it became the United Nations, and it's all of their front companies from The Hague and everything, they administer these laws and stuff, and then create these round tables and get these things into effect. The Pentagon, being the level 14 social service child abuse counselor and a drug counselor, group home management and nutrition counselor. I went to NAMI when I was on the Board of Mental Health in Santa Cruz just before and traced NAMI all the way to where all these processes and, and stuff were being formulated and it was the military that's doing all our medical stuff and they're doing away with the VA medical and everything. You're going to have one health care and you're going to take what they give you. They've already made nutrients and vitamins are illegal and you can only get them with a script. They want to know who's giving what. Dude, this is some sick stuff. They're trying to eliminate you and they're doing it because you guys want to have a car and some money and you're living on the outside, inside out instead of outside in where everything within is the only thing that's real here. Everything without, we're here, yeah, but this ain't going to be here forever. So it was, you should tune in to what endures. And what endures is within you and only each one of you will find it nowhere out here, but only in yourself. So that's what the brotherhood was pushing back in the day when we took our acid and experiments and our mescaline and, and our youth. When we were young, strapping kids, yeah. And all the chicks were beautiful. Now we're going, wow, were the chicks that cute when we were that age? Hell yeah, they were, damn. Anyway, um, as we move on and stuff, and they do this medical marijuana crap and everything, and, and uh, hey, and everybody's begging them and stuff. Even Wham, dude, was is a big scam with the High Times DEA. Um, the whole thing, they're, you know, they got um, marijuana stock markets, dude, that you can invest in right now. And GW Pharmaceuticals is that guy Watson that was a DEA snitch in Santa Cruz years ago, and then Rosenthal came and got him when they were setting up all this medical marijuana crap, you know, and stuff, and da 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 da, -da, -da tax it, you know, tax it, or oh, yeah. tax on our team, man. It grows out of the ground, God grew it here, now they're gonna tax plants. This is just the first step. They open, don't you folks. Stand <laughs> on the corner, I'll bring you your money in a couple days if I don't show up. Well, I'll catch you next time. Yeah, that's our money, man. So anyway, we can uh, uh, move on ahead here and, or, or, and just like uh, be aware of these people, but we don't have to co-create their sickness with them. So according to this 2012 prophecy, a 56,000 year cycle through the four corners of the universe, every 200 and something down about it that we go through, and they're gonna, they might let the aliens out from underground now that they're hipping you guys to aliens and stuff like that. Yeah, and again, that's right. They don't have to hide them anymore. And then no, because them. there's some that really don't like us and they want to get rid of us. They're tired of living the way they are, like we're tired of living the way we are. Yeah, and then supposedly Only the blue they stars can do can. it. The we Hopi, can't. The hope you have a blue star prophecy and everybody else that is supposed to be coming and and that's going to turn the Earth's axis around the way it's supposed to go counterclockwise and then everything will be there as we go into the fourth and fifth dimension. These people with their bloodline and all their sickness are going to turn into ashes and they won't, in all sincerity. They won't have a new beginning except on the Earth. They will finally be assimilated to the Earth. We will assimilate the alien nation into our vibration and then we're going to supposedly um, go to 2,000 years of uh, the golden age because we're going into the there's four corners of the universe after different metals and we always keep coming back but it, it changes, it keeps changing. So um, 
God, we're getting old, man. The Lord's looking at us. Damn. It's like, what do you mean getting old? What's old? You're only like, oh, 80 years old? What's old? 250 billion years and shit like that? Speaking of which, just how small stuff you guys really are in all of your way. Sandy, can we play that Hubble space thing? More and more for the folks. We love you guys out there. We're just trying to hip you to the man. You can't hip a chump. Don't give a sucker a break. And you can't cheat an honest man. You can't hip a chump. You told those guys Jesus had a wife. No, no not that one. The other one. Anaheim. All my Hubble boys, we love you. To the brotherhood everywhere, dude. Hey, that's We dared me. the truth and we did oh, it, Oh, that was the and one that was with, we were showing in the background. Close to what we've done. Yeah. And, and we, we can have... That's me and Nick. Now watch this. Except show, yeah, there we go. The universe is a big place. We know it instinctively. It resonates on a deep level. We also hear about how big it is every time we go into a planetarium, take an astronomy course, or whenever we just look up at the sky on a clear night. But knowing something is big and being able to visualize it are two different things. When astronomers talk about the size of our universe, they love to use gigantic numbers to explain everything. To astronomers and cosmologists who work with this stuff every day, it makes perfect sense. To them. For the rest of us, though, these numbers are so big we just end up with a blank stare on our face when we hear them. The problem is, they're just too big to be meaningful and the study of astronomy is filled with numbers like these. So we go about our daily lives, driving to work, cooking dinner, posting our videos to YouTube, and it's all too easy to forget about the rest of the universe. It's too easy to become caught up in our everyday stuff. After all, we have much better things to do than think about how big the universe is. Let's not be too hard on ourselves, though. I mean, of course the universe matters. It's just that the numbers in astronomy are too darn big to get our heads around. Our brains just aren't wired to visualize big numbers like 47 billion. That's the size of the universe. 47 billion light years in radius. Saying that number, though, doesn't really help, does it? Luckily, an image was taken that can help us see just how big that number is at a glance. In 1995, the Hubble Space Telescope stared for 10 days at a rather unremarkable patch of sky. The results were nothing less than humbling on a universal scale. Thousands of galaxies filled the image. Roughly 3,000 galaxies were detected in a patch of sky that looks completely and utterly empty. Let's take a minute and put this in perspective. We live on a planet, one of eight in our solar system. We'll miss you, Pluto. These planets orbit a rather unremarkable star. Our star is in a galaxy, one of 500,000 million in the Milky Way. I know, big numbers again, but bear with me. This is the Pinwheel Galaxy in the constellation Ursa Major, a galaxy much like our own. This is the largest and most detailed image of a spiral galaxy ever taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. Every one of these points of light is a star. Every single one. Some are bigger and some are smaller than our sun, but they're all stars. Many of them have planets orbiting around them. Looking at this image, the idea that the Earth may be the only planet in the entire universe that harbors life appears almost absurd. It seems much more likely that there are many more planets like ours. Our galaxy is just one of many in our local group. And there are many, many galaxies. 
When we look up at the sky, we can see only about 3,000 stars on a clear, dark night. From that, it's easy to think that that's all there is. The universe almost doesn't seem quite so big. Now we know better. The Hubble Deep Field is one of the few examples that help us get our heads around just how big our universe is. The story's not over, though. Later, in September 2003, the Hubble did it again. This time, it looked at another unremarkable section of sky and stared at it again for a little over 11 days. They used improved detectors with different filters, and this time, they saw this. This is called the Ultra Deep Field. It represents the farthest we've ever seen into the universe. Over 10,000 galaxies are in this picture. Every single dot, smudge, and smear is an entire galaxy. And each one of these dots has millions and millions of stars. Each star has the possibility of planets orbiting it. Each one with the possibility of a civilization. This is what we see when we stare at a blank spot in the sky where nothing appears to be. This is the number of galaxies in nothing. This is a picture of 47 billion light years. It's a picture of how small we are. It is the single most important image ever taken by humanity. Hey, that was the deep Hubble Space Odyssey. That gives you an idea. You know, if you, our sun compared to Antares' sun, it's like Pluto to our sun, and it gets bigger and bigger as you go, so don't sweat the small stuff. But anyway, let's, um, um, Nick Shu and all them guys, or Nick Shaw wrote the book Orange Sunshine, and, and when I got into it, I emailed him about Stubby being a, you know, a, sticking guns in people's heads and and kids and ripping them off for coke he did that to tommy and linda bidwell and to me and huh a lion bullshit yeah dude and anyway um and then so we uh when nick got a hold of me and uh wanted to uh what do you call it he wanted to interview me for his book and i said sure but you got to let me interview you on my TV show. And he said, okay. So he came up here and everything. And then when we got to do the TV show, he, he goes, I said, okay, now, how do you want to do this? And he says, well, just don't ask me anything about the book. And I looked at him and I went, what? And then so we decided we were going to play some music, you know. And so I didn't know what's up with him, you know. It's like, don't ask him anything about the book. Hmm. And then how am I going to interview you and stuff, you know. So, um, uh so anyway, he started playing this song, and I just made up a song to it, you know, and stuff. And and I, when I introduced him, I did it kind of offhand, like, "Oh, this is Nick Shu, the author of Born Sunshine." And then that was it. So I didn't really get an interview from him, but um, I filmed him talking about that stuff. But anyway, can we show that um, clip of uh, me and Nick on that, Sandy? Please. And Nick is, uh, we're going to play some blues for you. This is an Orange County boy. We're doing a, um, he's writing a book on the Brotherhood of Eternal Love. All my friends from Anaheim, all my homeboys, we love you. To the Brotherhood everywhere, dude. We dared the truth and we did it, man. And nobody can ever even come close to what we've done. And, and we have um, brought peace and love and marijuana to the world. Don't tell us what to grow out of the ground. And all them judges out there, you guys that are giving time to them kids and stuff for weed and stuff, you're breaking the Constitution. You need to go to prison. All you fools out there that are putting people in prison for natural stuff to grow out of the ground, you need to go down. Hey, what's up? Okay.
Just play whatever you want. You know, I'm not. I don't do other people's songs. Just give me the music. All right. So you don't care what it is. No. All right. I'll, I'll come up with something. Are we doing a rock song? Whatever. Oh, well, we're live. We're live. We're live. Here we go. been on the front lines and smuggled in thousands of pounds of weed for you guys so that you could see beyond the doors of perception Aldous Huxley instead of the Orwellian big brother who you work for, the man. Peace and love, Santa Cruz in. Yeah, thank you. See you next time. Bye. Hey, there we go. That was Nick and me. I just made that song up. And then so you guys, you guys been cruising with us for the high times and the true adventures of the Brotherhood of Eternal Love with Brother Crazy George and Bobby Bell. I used to be Chris Wheat and some other names, but that's all right. It's the name game. You take Tony, I'll take, you know, the name game. Remember that song? It's the name game. And then, so anyway, we'll see you next time, and we ask you all to remember to keep love in your heart and stay tuned in with the source of the universe that gives duration to all of us. You'll find that within yourself, within yourself, within yourself. You don't need a middleman. And then, so um, 
That's what we've been pushing the brotherhood for all these years is, is self-realization. And um, yeah, now it's going so big. But hey. On a winter's day, I'd be saving.